All right, we know our next guest is a regular PTL contributor. Heinz History Center President and CEO Andy Masick is a frequent guest here on our show. He talks about new exhibits at the center in the Strip and how our Pittsburgh history relates to events of today. But the question is, how much do we know about his history? So today we asked Andy to answer a few questions so we can find out more about him and his past. So we want to welcome Andy and full disclosure, we got this idea after reading a fascinating story about you in the current edition of Pittsburgh Quarterly. Hi, Andy. Hi. Yeah, Doug Hoyk and Jeff Seawall at the Pittsburgh Quarterly called me and said, hey, can we do a, a story on you, uh, your, your history, your biography? I kind of felt like it was a eulogy before I was even dead. Oh, Andy. But it's been great because people have been calling me up and saying, hey, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right, so let's yeah. dig into some of this. So we're going to start with a, really a simple question, but we understand the answer is not so simple. Tell us about your growing up. Well, um, I grew up in Yonkers, New York, and my father died when I was very young. I was eight years old, and uh, my mother remarried, and my disciplinarian stepfather uh, wanted to retire in Arizona. So there's my mom and uh, she was a graduate of Carnegie Tech in the drama department mm -hmm. and she was a speech therapist and the, the whole family, my older brother and two younger sisters moved to Tucson, Arizona. And it was like culture shock for these Eastern kids living in the desert. But I loved it, and I was interested in the Civil War already, and so I applied my interest in history to the Wild West. Well, there was some, wasn't there something in particular that led you to become really interested in history to, to get to the point where you are today? It's true. When I was about 10 years old, uh, our family would go to Lake Chautauqua, Chautauqua, New York, uh, every summer. And up in the attic of this old Victorian house that my grandparents owned, I found a Civil War bullet, a mini ball that was dug up at Gettysburg. And I was fascinated by this thing, this big heavy lead pointed bullet. And I wrote letters to the Smithsonian Institution in my kiddish scrawl in pencil on a blue lined notebook paper. And I drew pictures of the mini ball and they wrote back to me and said, yes, that was invented by Captain Manet of the French Army in 1849, and it contributed to the, the highest casualties of any American war, the Civil War. And I started collecting mini balls, and I had exhibits in my boyhood bedroom, and you had to take a brochure to get into my room. There was a rack on the door. Wow. So, so you turned your bedroom into a, a museum. It was. I had the monitor and the Merrimack were made out of popsicle sticks and I had paper mache hats and wooden swords and I gave tours in my my boyhood bedroom and I took pictures of all the neighborhood kids dressed up in uh, Civil War costumes and tableaus. I was I was really out there as a kid. <laughs> and, well, <laughs> that's okay because look at what you became. Yes, yeah. You're sort of destined to become what you have become. So we have a picture of uh, you being a reenactor of the Civil War, right? That's right. Uh, I was probably 18, uh, 17 or 18 look at years this. old. And that's a mini musket. That's the kind of musket that that mini ball was fired from. And of course, I met my wife, Debbie, in high school. We were seniors in high school, and I got her to dress up too. And uh, she's this beautiful brunette uh, wearing hoop skirts. And uh, I, was, uh, I was pretty proud of, uh, of her too. And my college professor asked me, uh, you know, he wanted me to be a PhD historian. And he asked me, now, do you have a girlfriend? And uh, I said, well, yeah, I do. And he said, oh, good, we can get that out of the way then, and you can focus on your study. <laughs> well, Andy, uh, certainly many interesting facts about you, but is it true that you were also in a Hollywood movie? It is true. You know, as a boy, I read the book, The Killer Angels by Michael Shera. Uh, it's about the Battle of Gettysburg, and I just love that book. And I said, if they ever make a movie of this, I've got to be in it. And so when I heard that Robert Redford bought the rights to the film, I called him up 
and said, hey, I have to be in this movie. And I got his assistant. And the assistant <laughs> said, well, we've sold it to Kevin Costner. Uh, I called Kevin Costner's office. They said, we've sold it to Ted Turner. And then <laughs> Ted Turner's people said, hey, send us pictures of yourself. Maybe you can be in this movie. And so I'm in the movie Gettysburg for 47 seconds. I'm with the Jeff oh. Daniels on Little Round Top. I'm bayoneting rebels. I'm, I, there's gun smoke everywhere. I do get killed on Little Round Top, but the director liked me so much that he resurrected me and promoted me to an officer, and I'm involved in the Pickett's Charge scene, too. All right, How we nice. have to get that clip. We, do. we have to oh, show yeah. that on a future episode yes. of Pittsburgh Today Live. Thank you so much, Andy, for joining us and sharing your life story. We feel like we know you so much better now. Well, I'll see you at the History Center, and I'll tell you the rest of the story. All right. Oh, there's even more. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thanks so much, Andy. Andy. Of course, Andy Masick, President, CEO of the Heinz History Center and regular PTL contributor. And you can read more about him in the spring issue of Pittsburgh Quarterly. You'll find the link on our PTL page.